Welcome back to the house of the Tenkai. It's busy here. It is Saturday morning. I'm still quite awake for a time being. Anyway, um, yeah, the first half of the trial is done and dealt with, and now we're going to deal with the second half of the first trial of the last case of the game. So without further ado, let's just go up and save and move on. February 9th, 11.15 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Excuse me, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm not really sure what to say. Itis, we only have 20 minutes. There are two things which I need to ask you before we reconvene. Alright, I'll help you any way I can. First, about that night. You really didn't go to the inner temple, correct? The last witness claims to have met and talked with you in the training hall. Either you or Sister Bikini is lying. Mr. Edgeworth, it is just as I said yesterday. Until the incident occurred, I was in my own room in Hazakura Temple. Very well. Second thing then. That night, the temple. The temple snowmobile. That night, the temple snowmobile was used in between the time Sister Bikini returned to the main hall and when she bore witness to the murder. Sometime between 10.30 and 11 p.m. that night. Were you the one who used the snowmobile? There's only one key for the snowmobile. The only person who could have used it was me. So it was you. But why? What made you go out to the dusky bridge? I'm sorry, Mr. Edgeworth. At a time like this, Itis. I can't tell you about that yet. Yet. Not until her safety is confirmed. Her? The safety of the Acolyte. The Acolyte. Hmm. She must be talking about Maya. Iris, look me in the eye and tell me the truth. Did you kill Elise Duden? No matter who or what may come, I could never take a life. As I thought, no psycholog. Very well. It is my job to get to the truth. You'll discover this for yourself soon enough. February 9th, 11.36 a.m., District Court, courtroom number 7. The court will now greet Kathleen, Miss Von Karma, where is the witness? During the break, a man was detained for suspicious behavior in the gallery. Suspicious behavior? He was sketching something very intensely. That was what the witness was sketching when he was detained. He drew a terrifying woman armed with a demonic face and a vicious view. I can only presume that an intention was kept! 
Anyway, it's time to drag this pathetic excuse for an artist before the court. Loris Dunin! I hope you're ready. Idiot! It would seem that Whip is going to see plenty more use today. Your sketch is in contempt of this court! Hey, hey, I was just artistically ready! Ah! You tried to run away from the belly who was trying to hand you your subpoena, correct? Look, I'm not about a fledgling lawyer who's training out of the mountains! Training in the mountains! I'm only down here in the city because I ran out of green paint! Well, they use a technical term for the color, Viridian. Viridian City! There okay. This isn't an art store, now is it? I know! I graduated junior high, okay? Look, art is all about working in the fields, isn't it? Working in the fields? I presume you wanted to say field work, I hope. That's it! Thanks, buddy! It's kind of sad that I was able to understand his mangled train wreck of a sentence. I just happened to stop in here and found a wonderful new model! So see? I don't got nothing to do with this trial! At all! I expect all your face to be red when you realize this mistake. Bright red! Or to use a technical term, Crimson Lake. <laughs> Stop your pathetic babbling and testify like a man! <laughs> Refrain from whipping me, Miss Von Karma! Cross whipping is as bad as cross checking! <laughs> Witness! This was all your fault! Testify now! Don't, don't talk to me, please don't talk to me. <laughs> so much for me! <laughs> What I saw. Yes. What indeed did you see? I was at the lodge out in the mountains looking up at the stars that night. I walked to the bridge a number of times, but I didn't see a snowmobile. Please don't bring that in there. I didn't meet anyone at the bridge that night. The girl I was waiting for didn't show up. My teacher died on me. I'm all alone now. <laughs> Witness, please refrain from talking directly to the lawyers during your testimony. Nobody, nothing but a small, worthless man, okay? Why was I asked for my name and occupation or anything else? Mr. Edgeworth, this man seems to have quite a severe inferiority complex. He's recently been in the cause. He's recently been the cause of numerous incidents. I think he's finally realized for himself just how much of a nuisance he has been to other people. Yeah, that's right! I'll be behind everything, every case! Watch out, okay? Just touching me will make you un eternally unhappy! Or eternally derpish. Well then, let us proceed with the cross-examining. With no touching. Thank you. We can delve into other details at a later time. What you really saw, sir? I only only have four to deal with, so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold it! A number of times? How many? Maybe five times went 
I went once every 20 minutes, which means you have spent almost two hours at Heavenly Hall that night. Yeah, bet. Real love is about waiting with your heart in your hands and waiting for somebody to squish you. Love, you say. It was this man's intention to. It was this man's intention because you're near the mic. It was this man's intention to summon the defendant to the small shack. Using this blackmail letter. But black blackmail! No, no, that was simply a product of our fucking <laughs> You huffy, puffy, lucy, cozy, excuse for whimpering, whining most of our weakness. So what did you see? I hope for your sake you saw a snowmobile. You huffy, puffy, lucy, cozy, excuse for whipping, whining most of a weakness, eh? Um, well, you see, being called those names doesn't seem to bother him at all. He knows the truth! Oh, you didn't meet someone. Oh, but I do believe you met this man. My friend since grade school. Fell from Dusky Bridge and is currently hospitalized. Objection! Larry Butts. Harry Ass. I can understand why you might want to throw your old life away. You're pretty pathetic and you cause all sorts of trouble. <laughs> Sorry! But having realized just how much of a nuisance you've been. That could be considered a step in the right direction. Angie, are you trying to console me? It certainly does seem that way to me. However, I cannot forgive you for simply turning away from the incidents you create. <laughs> you totally pity on me. Now then, let us talk about the night of the murder. Sister Bikini, after seeing the murder take place, asked Phoenix Wright to report it. Thus, he headed for the public phone by the bridge. There, he happened across a nefarious, a certain nefarious individual. You! Harry asked, Larry Butts! That's me. That's right. Me in the flesh. Hmm. Listen carefully, witness. It doesn't matter if you change your name. So as long as you remain pretty pathetic, you will continue to cause these incidents. That reality will not change. But what do you want me to do then? Larry, what you need to change is your inner self. What you saw that night. Testify truthfully. That is all you can do for now. I think I finally woke it up. Sure. Well, I guess I could still. Uh, well, I guess I could still be sleeping. But anyway, I'll do it. I'll testify. Well, I'm not sure this will go especially well. I'll ask again then, witness. What did you see on the night of the murder? But I saw part two. Yeah, what did you see? I went to the shack at around 9, so it would have been around 10.30 p.m. I was lying under my bedding, but a white flash almost blinded me. I looked out the window and Dusky Bridge was on fire. There was still some thunder, but I went right away to check it out. That's when I ran into Nick. Hmm. You suddenly saw quite a lot, didn't you? So, 
that happened to the bridge after it caught on fire. It was like me, after a three day stint chasing a girl. It totally burned out! Like, almost totally gone. I mean, trying to cross the burning remains what was caused Nick to fall. <laughs> Fact, did you say it? Oh, don't worry. Nothing life threatening. He just caught a cold. As always, how to know if he should be called lucky or unlucky. Now, Mr. Edgeworth, please commence your cross examination. You saw part two. Really? What did you do out there in the cold for an hour and a half? Well, if you really must know, I was busy being excited, I guess. Hmm. Sorry, it. Did I even ask? I set the mating time as 10 p.m., right? But I couldn't wait, and I thought she might come early, too. Well, it appears she didn't come at all in the end. That's what she, that's what he wanted. Because they never arranged to meet in the first place, did they? Shut up! I'm gonna pick you my fond memories apart! Anyway, I was, I was getting a little worried. I thought maybe Iris had lost her weight. So I reached 20 minutes or so, and went out to the bridge. I didn't see anything particularly suspicious. I didn't, I didn't have anything else to do, so I, so I went back to the shack to wait for her. Hold it! Seeing that, what did you do? What do you think? I was burning up as well from the fire in my heart! And that's why you went to take a look at the breach. Well, to be honest, it was freezing cold, so at first I thought, forget it, I'm not leaving my covers. But yeah, it pretty much stopped snowing, so I don't know, I changed my mind. Hmm? I'm not sure if I can, I'm not sure I care for your forget it attitude, your hide up first witness. What to do now, what to say, what to do now, and what to say, what to do now, and what to say. Well, might as well press this one. You said right away, but exactly how long after the strike was that? Lightning fell and then the bridge caught on fire. Maybe around five minutes? I mean, I suddenly thought I gotta go check this out. How far is the smart shack you were in from the bridge? Hold on, well, it had pretty much stopped snowing. I guess about five minute walk. And how did Dusky Bridge look when you got there? Like I had recovered a piece of my childhood. I mean, not even a bonfire's kids make during school camping trips can compare. Well, should I press him a little more for info? I have to ask, I have to ask. Why didn't you call anyone? Larry, let me ask you one thing. What is it, H? What's with the serious face? Why didn't you call anyone? Eh? What do you mean? Normally, when faced with a towering inferno, one would try and tell someone. There's a public phone right by Dusky Bridge, correct? Well, of course I thought of doing that. So then, let's hear why you didn't. Yeah, okay, reason. My reason. 
It isn't that I didn't try to tell anyone, I just didn't have time to, okay? I arrived at the bridge and Nick showed up less than a, less than a minute later. Oh, well, in this case. Might I show you the weather data? Objection! Your very existence being a contradiction. I'm not sure if you can grasp this or not. What the uh -huh. hell, Angie? You make, you make me sound like some sort of alien! But your testimony is conclusively contradictory. The problem here is time. I've never been the best timekeeper, you know. Three minutes after Billy leaves on foot, you follow him on your bicycle? How long does it take for you to catch up with him? Terrible at those. Uh-huh. Not the only one. This is much more simple. You saw the lightning strike Dusky Bridge. And immediately went to see what ha had happened. Is this correct? Yeah. Well, I wasted about five minutes first, but more or less. I have the weather data from the night of the murder here. According to this, the lightning fell at 10.45 p.m. You say it takes less than five minutes from the shack to Dusky Bridge. Meaning you probably got there at around 11 p.m. That all sounds about right, I guess. And then Nick showed up and did his falling act. Hmm. That is impossible. What do you mean? 11 p.m. is when the murder occurred in Hazakota Temple. Thus, Wright was still there in the courtyard. There was no, there is no way that Larry could have encountered him at Dusky Bridge at that time. Oh, excuse me, I, I have an objection. You do. Hey, she how many times do I have to say this? I'm not Larry, I'm Larry's dude. God! It has not been proven that the murder occurred at 11 p.m. The sister only said around 11. In which case, it could have been earlier than that. Watch your footing there, Miss Francisca Sheena Von Karma. The slope ahead is very slippery. For there is still no way that Wright could have been at Dusky Bridge at 11 p.m. And why not? It is clearly written here in the weather data report. It took around 30 minutes for the bridge to burn out. Therefore, the bridge must have been burning until at least 11.15 p.m. Which means what exactly? Right, did not see the bridge as it was burning that night. He did not arrive there until after the flames had died down. Larry! You arrived at the bridge at 11 p.m. Wright did not make it there at until at least 11.15. Are you still trying to hide something from us? What happened during these missing 15 minutes? <laughs> I feel like it just woke up. I guess I was still sleeping at the Pitch me! Order, 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 cut! So that was a Missing 15 minutes prior to meeting Phoenix, right? I hardly see that as much of a problem. Yeah, not much of a problem at all! Really? The bridge is burning before your eyes, and there is a phone right next to it. Why, then, did you not report the accident? Did you simply watch the bridge burn? That is the problem here. Even after the bridge burnt out, he was still there. He simply stood there and didn't report anything. Th that's what it sounds like. This might be the Larry we are talking about. But even he is incapable of being so stupid. There has to be a reason for his inaction. Yes, he is derp. 
For Larry, he has derped a brick. He doesn't shit a brick, he derps a brick. And right now, he just derped a brick. Edgy. I think it's about time I got serious with you, dude. Just as I thought. You've been playing with us all this time. Listen, I'm... I'm going to tell you everything. Are you sure you want to hear it all? Yes. I may really say it this time. Every time! That's it! Very well. I have, ter I have a terribly bad feeling about this, however. Let's have the witness finally give us the, the whole truth. Now, for this 15 minute gap, what were you doing, witness? 15 minutes. Didn't do a goddamn thing. The missing 15 minutes. I'm a doonim. I'm an artist. What do you think I was doing? Sketching in front of the bridge. I was whipped up into a frenzy of art. The shock and awe that I was feeling, I transferred it all. I transferred it directly onto the page. Before I realized that the flames had gone out and then he came running up. Hmm. I suppose all this can be strange folk. Yeah. I am an artist. I write books. I stay up during. I stay up late at night doing this stuff, trying to make something happen. And then you got other people. Other people I will not mention because they know who they are. We are strange folk. Yes, indeed. That's right. I'm willing to sacrifice everything in order to draw the perfect sketch. I'm not. I can't draw shit. <coughs> Including the truth from the sound of it. Mr. Edgeworth has this removed the last of your doubts. Not at all, Your Honor. One very large doubt still remains. And what would that be? That is a surprising, believable story, especially coming consider especially considering the stores. So why did he think he needed to hide it from us until now? I intend to drag the reason out of him! <laughs> You'll regret this, Angie. Hold it. The burning bridge! The burning bridge and everything that came with it! Mm. What? Came with it? You wanna hear this from my lips, do you, Edgy? You don't regret this! The sketch of mine is done! Enough. Just take that, that ridiculous sketch of yours out already, weakness. What are you talking about? I don't know. I don't know what you mean. That does indeed appear to be the fastest solution. I'll leave it to you, Mr. Edgeworth. What should I do? I've got a terrible feeling that the instant this sketch is revealed, the entire world may be changed by what is depicted here. The entire world may be changed by what is depicted there. Let's look at it. Larry, I wonder if you could show us your sketch. Please. Well, well. Even I couldn't have imagined it turned out like this. Imagine what? That Laurie's Dunim's debut would take place here today, like this. No! Okay, but steal yourselves. This is the world of Radis Denim! Shut up, Brick! <laughs> <laughs> it's
instant shit a brick. Uh, um, well, so this is, this is Dusky Bridge, correct? Qu quite a large bridge, isn't it? Your response, Miss Von Karma. Y yes, well, it's a better drawing than I expected. Isn't it, isn't it? I struggled to reproduce those flames, I really did. Yes, I'm sure you did. Shadowbrick. Shadowbrick. This is gonna get ugly! No one has the bravery to bring it up, it seems. This mysterious flying object. Wait, the burning bridge is fine, but what is that unfortunate looking figure? Ah, you spied at, I thought you might. However much I want to ignore it, I can't. It's ours, of course, Iris! I wish she'd take better care of herself, we have, pl we have, we have to plan for our future, you know. What would have happened to her if she had injured herself flying like that? Shit a brick. Shit a brick! Larry, please answer this next question honestly. Okay. Are you really claiming to have seen this? Are you claiming to have seen the silhouette of the defendant? Flying over a bridge that was engulfed in flames. Yep, that's why I saw. That's why I drew it. I'm an artist, a real artist. Oh, you hi! <laughs> the girl, she's really high up in the in this picture. This is all a bad dream. I was hitting you on the cheek to test that theory. Please rub your own cheek from now on if you wish to test your wife theories. Anyway, no court of law will ever acknowledge that b b people can f fly. Actually, there is some precedent for this. She was flying pretty high, my sweet Iris. She was about 30 feet above the bridge, at least. It was really so and see. This has to be some kind of mistake. Miss Sashwa, please bring the witness back down to earth. What? Me? This witness is your friend, is he not? Accessory to foolishness, Myers Edgeworth. Let us get back to the cross-examination by force if necessary. Mr. Edgeworth, I expect you to expose the uh, obvious contradiction here. Yes, Your Honor. Looks like I've got another reason to remember this moron. Well, what do you think of my debut piece? Get that thing away from me! Their sketch has shed a brick into the court record. Now, hurry up and cross-examine him! And so you say, I saw Iris flying, her white hood fluttering! White hood fluttering. Receive before the lights out bell the night of the crime. Protect from evil spirits. Objection! Larry, what did you really see that night? Not that I particularly care. In your position, that's just being irresponsible! I just drew exactly what I saw! I'll give you a whole dollar if that's the truth! Oh wow, a whole dollar. I could use that and go to McDonald's for a cup of coffee or something. 
if that is truly the case, then there's one thing that we can say for certain. What might that be? That the person who flew over the bridge could not have been the defendant Iris. But what? What do you mean? I don't understand. A fool hearted folly of a foolish statement by an equally foolishly fool hearted fool. How exactly can you make this claim? Tell us, Larry. According to this picture, the individual whom you say you saw was wearing a hood, correct? Of course he was! I run down the is quite a way from the bridge. The hood is what told me that my floating angel was my iris. The hood is my darling iris, and iris is my darling hood. It seems there are a bigger fools in this world than the one at the defense's bench. Larry, there's something you need to be made aware of. On the night of the murder, Iris wasn't wearing her hood. She had given it to Wright as a gift. Are you going to change your story now? Perhaps suggest it was Wright who took flight? I think you understand what I mean just fine. Why? Why did Nick have my resign? Huh? Hey, what's going on, virus and Nick? Why you, Nick, you dog? I do believe that this unbelievably mysterious sketch is destined to disappear, discredited and discarded straight into the garbage. <laughs> what is it now, witness? It feels like I've been waiting 25 years for this very day to come. Angie, today's the day I get to completely stupefy you! What? What is the meaning of your outburst witness? I hate to have to do this, but I have some definite, I have some definitive evidence. Definitive evidence? I just did indeed come flying over the burning bridge, and I, Lottie Stunim, shall prove it. I didn't expect to ask this again, but we shall be needing your testimony once again. Tell us anything you know concerning the defendant as depicted in the sketch, and show us your evidence that this nightmare was actually a reality. Okay, hope you're ready, Edgy, because I'm gonna feed you a whopping serving of pain! Like you know what that is, about. You've been serving us a whopping serving of pain this whole time, trust me. <sighs> Proof that Iris flew! When I reached Dusky Bridge, she was already gone. I was so worried, I so I frankly searched all over. That led me to finding the a beautiful crystal sphere. How buried in the snow. I'm sure that Iris was simply wearing a spare hood. After all, no one else could have lost a crystal spear that night. Or would they? A crystal spear? This one. Pretty, isn't it? A fire's keeper. That sphere. Where'd you find it? Let me see. Around here somewhere? Looks about right. And it was half buried in the snow. That pretty much stopped snowing by then. There's still some falling as I walk to the bridge. Hmm. The court accepts this crystal spear. That's mine, okay? I want it back afterward. There's something on it, isn't there? Hmm. Oh my. It's a bloodstain. What? 
Bloodstain? And we get the Crystal Spear! That is as evidence. Yeah, ready, Angie? By tomorrow morning, you'll be calling me Master Larry! No, we won't. Yeah, I like the sound of that. No one's gonna push me around anymore. Uh-huh. Keep saying that. Didn't you want to be called Lori's Dunim only a few minutes ago? <laughs> Proof that Iris flew! Um, no. Well, we're just going to go to the last statement. Everybody at least do them when she was alive has her fingerprints on it. Objection! Larry. That night, there was someone. Someone who lost the crystal sphere. There was? Who? Who was this stupid idiot? Miss Elise Dunham! The mentor to a stupid idiot! A victim? I have photo of her here. And on the end of her staff, you can see a familiar looking crystal sphere. Hey! That's my photograph! Give it back! <laughs> a crystal sphere is like that, it's quite easy to find. I've one just like it are on my brooch. They look nothing alike! In any case, please take a look at this. This is the victim's staff found at the scene of the crime. Oh! The crystal sphere? It's gone! Anyone jump or flew across that across the bridge that night. It certainly was not Iris, after all. She was not wearing her hood, more importantly. The crystal sphere found at the landing site was not hers either. But that means the one who flew and dropped the sphere was the victim Mr. Lee's Dunham? Fool alongside another fool on a fool's errand to reach a foolish conclusion. First of all, this sketch, which I prefer to call a scribble, is ridiculous. People cannot fly, thus it is rejected. You can't do that, so multiple! And this crystal sphere, this is nothing more than a red herring. You honestly believe that? Give it some thought and I'm sure you will realize it as well, my edgy wrath. Elias Dunham was in her room on the night of the murder. There was no reason for her to go to Dusky Bridge. Therefore, this fear cannot be related to this case. That is all. Miss Francisca Sina Von Karma! The only people who will accept that explanation are scatterbrains and clowns. Why are you pointing at me? The victim's crystal sphere was found near the bridge on the night of her murder. Yet you expect us to believe this has nothing to do with this with the case? Objection. That crystal sphere. It was probably thrown away at the bridge after the murder. After the murder? There is blood on this crystal sphere, isn't there? This naturally suggests that it was thrown away after the murder took place. The killer placed it there to throw the investigation off the scent. The same reason he drew that, that ridiculous sketch. 
What? Give me. I'm the killer! Fuck! <laughs> Enough joking. Just when did this crystal sphere appear near the foot of the bridge? Unless this can be proven in some way, I refuse to believe this is related to the case. She makes a valid point. There is no evidence that Ilis Dunem left Hazakor Temple that night. However, if somehow this crystal sphere can be proven to have been dropped before the victim was killed, then the case, then this case is going to transform into something else entirely. Your response, Miss Sedgeworth. I want your final opinion on the disposition of this crystal sphere. It is not related. If it is not related to this case, then this witness, who you called, would have been nothing more than a monumental waste of time. Prepare yourself for some very appropriate punishment, my Edgeworth. Can I prove it? Can I prove that the Crystal Sphere was dropped before the murder took place? Yes, I can! <clears throat> can I prove it? That isn't the issue. To simply prove it, that's the only option. That's what he did. That's the way Phoenix Wright would do this. Your Honor, allow me to prove something to you. I will prove that this crystal sphere is a vital link to solving this case. You will do what? That look in your eyes. You remind me of Phoenix Wright when he is cornered. That should come as no surprise. Because right now, I am Phoenix Wright. And I am indeed cornered. I order you to present your evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. Evidence that proves that the crystal sphere was indeed dropped before the murder. <sighs> well, if it doesn't make sense, it will make sense. This crystal sphere, it was half buried in the snow, correct? That's right. If it hadn't stopped snowing, then it would have been game over. The snow would have totally covered it. That's all I need to hear from you, Larry. Your testimony makes one thing quite clear. Wh what? When the crystal sphere was dropped, it was snowing. Ever, even if an... Yeah. When the crystal sphere was dropped, it was snowing, even if it was ever so slightly snowing. On the other hand, let us look at the scene of the murder. As proven earlier today, there is no snow on the victim's body. Ah! Therefore, the crystal sphere must have been dropped before the murder. What? What? Order! 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 On the night of the murder, the victim did indeed go to Dusky Bridge. And there, something occurred that caused this crystal sphere to come loose. What? What could have it been? This sphere. This... This sphere. There's something... There's some blood on it, isn't there? Allow me to raise a certain possibility at this juncture. The real crime scene was near the foot of Dusky Bridge. The murder didn't take place in the Hasakota Temple courtyard? Only a fool would suggest such a foolish piece of absolute foolishness. Just who was the fool? And which part is so foolish, Miss Von Karma? Have you 
you been paying any attention this whole time, my HLF? The sister saw everything. She saw the victim being killed by the defendant in the House of Court Temple Courtyard. That's not exactly true, now. To put it more precisely, what she saw was the murder weapon being removed from the victim's body. That's the same thing! No, it isn't. You said it yourself. A very little blood is actually lost at the moment of the blade's insertion. If you want to talk about when the, bl the most blood would be lost from a body, that would be when the blade is removed. If that statement is the truth, then Dusky Bridge could very easily be the scene of the murder. The murder weapon was not removed, thus there was no bleeding. Objection. You are forgetting one vital thing, my Zetchvev! Tunem's body was found in Hazakota Temple. On foot it takes 15 minutes to travel from Dusky Bridge to Hazakota Temple. You mean to suggest someone carried the body all that way? I made it this far. The only place to take this is to the end. I just need to prove the possibility to happen as I pursue them. Now, if the defense is ready, the court would like to have an explanation. Please show us the method by which the victim's body was carried to Azakura Temple. Oh, okay. Take that! On that snowy night, there is one way that a body could have been moved. The snowmobile. Ah. As we know, the snowmobile was used that night. It was explained as having been used to dispose of the murder weapon. But it could have been, but it could also have been used to carry a body. Order, 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 God! This, this is completely unacceptable! My Zetchiref! You'll dug yourself into your own grave! What do you mean? The only one who could have used the snowmobile was the defendant. She is the one who moved the body. Doesn't that put the final nail in your coffin? <laughs> You're too late, Francisca Shina von Karma. And in fact, the defense has proven something entire something else entirely. We have shown that this case requires further investigation. F what? Where was the victim Elise Dunham really killed? If her body was moved, whatever for? And finally, just what does this image mean? To think about that! Such a creature could never see the truth, let alone describe it! This witness certainly sits on one of the lowest possible branches of humanity. However, he would never utter a lie that could hurt a girl with whom he is enamored. He drew this, so it is something that actually happened. The defense stands firm on this point. Is she? Thank you. That says it then. I cannot give a verdict under these circumstances. <laughs> right. I seem to have fulfilled my part in this. It is just as I thought. Francisca Shina von Karma, you make a wonderful partner. 
Excuse me? There was one reason and one alone. There was one reason and one alone for me being here. To expose the darkness lurking in this case and then pass it on to right. R really? That's what this is all about? You could have just told me from the very beginning and I wouldn't have had friends if I got like doubt. Must etch you that. See me in my office later. And you would turn up your pants. Like, what? I don't care about what you were here to do. This was my chance to finally grant you under my heel. I bow down to no woman, damn it. Shame that your chance seemed to have slipped by you. Why shut the fucking crazy? This is all your fault! Such a terrible witness! You are a front to all the stems and fat guns that I can back to! I demand satisfaction! Damn! Damn! I cannot believe that the witness testimony actually relates to a natural event. However, there has to be some sort of answer for the questions it raises. Have his words here today been the truth or lies? Next time we gather in this courtroom, those that those are the matters that shall be addressed. I am continuing on thorough investigation by both the defense and the prosecution. And with this, the rest is up to you. Right. Court is now adjourned! And with that, that will do it for today's trial for this Let's Play. I have been the Tenkaichi of Gaming Ichigo Musko. I am glad to know that I am, I am still back doing this series. I'm glad to be doing this series again. And I thank you once again for joining me upon watching this very let's play. I would say watch watch this with some popcorn because it's going to be long and it's going to be very entertaining. So with that, until next time, I'm going to save my data off screen. And with that, as I say always with every, every time and place for every game that I do, I'll see you next time. Keep on gaming and... Tenkai! Muso! Later. <laughs>